If you're looking to shift the flow of battle, control the pace of the fight, or just transform into a giant Vajra Titan, then look no further because today I have a guide all about Tien Hai in Naraka Blade Point. Hey everyone, it's OSK, and today we're going to be going over all the basics of our favorite monk and really get down to why you should play Tien Hai in your Naraka Blade Point games. Tien Hai has a kit full of ways to regain control of your fights and dominate your opponents in convincing fashion. Not everyone can play Tien Hai to perfection, but those who do will find themselves coming out on top with a decisive bell or stomp to the face. In today's video, we're going to go over the skills of Tien Hai, his ultimates, and then we'll get into all the advanced techniques and tips you'll need to start your rampage through Morris Isle. So if you're ready to get to learning how to improve your gameplay with Tien Hai and stomp the competition, then make sure you watch the video all the way to the end so you do not miss a single tip. Here we go. Starting with Tien Hai's main skill, Divine Bell is a defensive tool that can be used for defense against both melee and ranged attacks. It is designed to grant you a turning point in most of your engagements. Like all character skills, the Divine Bell has three variations. The basic Divine Bell you start out with will clang both your opponent's basic attacks and focus attacks, giving you a brief window opportunity to gain the upper hand just after the stun. This is very useful if you're getting comboed on the ground as you can use it at any time and it will block all melee damage and reflect ranged projectiles back at your opponents. You'll want to use it often to snowball your way to victory. The second variation of Divine Bell is called Counter and it works much like a regular Counter except better. Instead of a short delay from Counter, the Divine Bell will offer the same protection during the entire duration, giving you a greater opportunity to disarm your opponents and take control of the battle from there. However, you must be careful as you cannot activate it while being stunned by basic attacks. It will also block ranged projectiles just like the basic Divine Bell. The third and final variation of Divine Bell is called Blast, and instead of a clang or counter, this bell lets you completely knock down your opponents a decent distance away, giving you the ability to follow up with a ranged weapon, space your opponent for a melee attack, or run away a bit easier. However, just like the second variant, you cannot use this while in hit stun. The bell also offers the universal reflection of ranged projectiles, and overall is a good substitute for the other two options if you're looking to completely reset a fight. There are plenty of ways to play Tien Hai due to the different functions of the Divine Bell, but they all revolve around having the ultimate defense in Araka Blade Point. Unlike some characters, you cannot just throw out your skills and hope for the best. Instead, it's important to time your abilities carefully in order to provide the best result for your Naraka Blade Point gameplay. Now before we get into Tien Hai's ultimates, how about doing me the ultimate favor and dropping the video a like if you're enjoying it so far, and subscribing to the channel for more Naraka Blade Point content in the future. But now, on to Tien Hai's ultimates. Tien Hai's ultimate is called Titan's Call, letting you transform into a giant Vajra with increased health and rampage around the battlefield with new attacks and abilities. The transformation itself also heals you back to full health and can be cancelled at any time. As a Vajra you can grab players close to you, reach out with a range grab to bring players within your grasp, and devastate your opponents with a heavy stomp on a cooldown. Fun fact, did you know that a Vajra can grab anyone out of their ultimate? A pretty handy tool in a close fight. A Vajra can grab up to two players at a time and can toss them around for heavy damage. Meanwhile, players can struggle and try to get out of your grasp if you take too long. The first variation of Titan's Call allows you to do these basic actions without any extra effects. The second variation of Titan's Call is called Guard, and this does everything the first variation does with the added benefit of healing your teammates in trios should you decide to pick them up. This allows you to flee combat with your team in a semi-safe way in most situations should you be in a tough spot. Finally, the third variation of Titan's Call is called Heal, and this of course does everything the first variation does with the added benefit of healing yourself from damaging enemies that you grab. This is great if you're in a solo match as any damage from third parties or the player you're fighting can quickly be mitigated by a simple grab and punch. And finally, for my favorite part of this ultimate, you can literally clap your opponents if you happen to grab two at the same time. And let me tell you, it's really satisfying. A few final notes to hit before we end the ultimate section. Just keep in mind that the Vajra form does have some weaknesses. In fact, the Vajra has a weak point that spawns in a random location each time you transform. The weak points can be in one of three places. The forehead, the left heel, or the right heel. The weak points allow players to stagger and deal extra damage to the Vajra form, which can be very problematic for any Tien Hai. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that the health that you get from the Vajra form will transfer over to your normal health bar, meaning you can heal with the Vajra form and deactivate it for a quick health boost, or you can even die as a Vajra. So you need to be extra careful and smart with how you use it. Furthermore, the amount of health you gain with the Vajra will differ depending on what game mode you're in. Vajra health will be less in solos than in trios, and the health will adjust depending on how many players are left in your trios game, so keep that in mind. And finally, for the last basic tip of Tianhai's ultimate, if you find yourself in a fight with another Vajra, there's actually a hidden rock paper scissor system you can take advantage of in your Titan vs Titan battle. Your new stomp ability will beat a close range punch, the punch will beat a range grab, and the range grab will beat the stomp. The window for attack is pretty tight, but if you time it right, you'll push the enemy Vajra back and deal extra damage. Overall, Tianhai's ultimate gives you plenty of options to control the pace of battle, whether through offense or defense, and you should definitely try him for yourself to see how he can help you stomp the competition. Now on to advanced tips for you newcomers to Tianhai. Tianhai may seem like a very simple character to play at first, but he does have some quirks you will want to make sure you know about before you go and try to clap your enemies. These tips will mainly be aimed towards players who are new to Tianhai, but hopefully for you higher ranked folks you may hear a tip or two you didn't know before. Let's get into our first advanced tip. The first tip I have for you is that your ultimate activation actually has some invincibility frames, or iframes for short, just before you transform. This can be used to avoid some unwanted damage, or even to dodge out of other characters' ultimate abilities, such as Viper Ning. There are a lot of ways to apply this across the board to give you the best edge in the majority of your fights, so definitely put it to good use. One thing I will say about the iframes is that it does not seem to work against Valda's ultimate, so keep that in mind if you go up against her. For the second tip, I'm going to have to reiterate the health boost you gain from activating your ultimate. If you're low health and it's time to bail out and reset the fight, you can simply activate your ultimate and regain all that health back and immediately revert back into your normal form if you can't do anything with your Vajra. The reason you want to do this and not push your luck sometimes is that good players will know the limitations of the Vajra form and will start to deal damage to you if they know you can't really do anything back to them. The damage you take while you're in the Vajra form will apply to your normal health pool, and again, you can even die in Vajra form, so make sure you're smart about it and deactivate your ultimate if you need to get away. The third tip I'd like to share with you is going to be about the Divine Bell. Personally, I'm a big fan of using the first version of Tianhai's Bell simply because you can activate it while under attack and turn the tide from there very quickly. But one thing you'll need to keep in mind is to not use it while you're in the air. Using the Divine Bell in the air will cause you to float after the animation, leaving you vulnerable to getting knocked down from attacks afterward. You can instantly dash and parry out of the bell if you're in the air, but typically it's safer to be on the ground. If you're going to use the bell, make sure you're on the ground and activate it early during the combo starter instead of while you're actually launched into the air. Finally, for the fourth and final tip, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite part of a battle royale, the final circle. As the final circle draws in, things tend to get chaotic pretty fast, and you'll start to take a lot of damage from the final zone. Of course, you'll want to go into your Vajra form to keep your health in a good spot, but did you know you can actually grab players and hold them outside the zone as they slowly lose more and more health? It's a pretty nasty tactic that should win you a lot of final 1v1s if you happen to save your ultimate for the final moment, so keep that in mind next time you find yourself against a Matari or anyone else in the final circle. And that's going to do it for today's guide on Tianhai. Thanks so much for watching. Another big thanks to Scout. He's basically a part of the family at this point, so go show him some love by following his Twitch channel. Also, if you're looking to join the Naraka competitive scene for tournaments and how to improve your gameplay further at an advanced rate, you can join the Naraka League Discord link in the description. And just in case you noticed, I do have a scratchy throat, presumably from having COVID as I'm awaiting test results, but don't worry, I'm doing just fine. The video should come out as normal. Now that's going to do it for me. Please be sure to leave the video a like and subscribe for more Naraka content. I've been OSK, y'all have a great day, and I will see you all out there.